Amen. Um, and then yesterday morning was a very moving, very special memorial service. And uh, thank you for being uh, being here for that. Let me just remind you a couple things before we begin our service. And this is going to be special today. It's going to be a blessing. You're going to be glad you're here. But let me remind you that, and you know this, because we typically start at 11 o'clock, there's going to be folks coming in at 11 o'clock. And so don't leave them hanging out there, okay? Uh, please let them know there's a seat uh, near you. And scoot over, give them room, do whatever you need to do. And if we need some chairs, we'll get them. But, and our ushers will be watching for all that. But please uh, make that available. Uh, there's dinner right after uh, the service today. And all of you are invited. And don't say, well, I didn't bring something. It's okay. We understand. We just want you to come fellowship with us, and we'll have lots to eat, and it'll be good. It'll be the best, as a matter of fact. So that's right after our service is dismissed. I don't know when that will be. I'll just say noonish. I told Brother Tom, I said, there's a point. We'll wait. And then there's a point where you turn the lights out uh, when you leave and uh, come over and join us for dinner. I want to uh, remind you the service tonight is dismissed uh, because of all of our homecoming activities. And you have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you have in your bulletin uh, the camp meeting uh, schedule. Everyone should have the camp meeting scheduled, okay? All right. So I'm so glad all of you are here, and, and I know there's things going on. We'll have prayer in just a moment. I, I'm so glad Brother Bill's here, you know. Uh, <coughs> You know he is battling stage four cancer, and uh, it's pretty bad. And the other night, uh, here he came in at the uh, tailgating, uh, he and Pam. And I, I said, well, who brought you? And he said, well, he drove. And so uh, just praise the Lord for that faithfulness and determination. We're praying for him. I want you to remember Barb Claiborne in your prayers, too, and we'll say more about that later. But remember all of our folks and all the the prayer request. Let me ask about birthdays before we get started. How about a birthday or two? Anybody? Stand. Let us be a blessing to you. There's Mike back there. Our brother-in-law. I know it. Where? Did we sing? Well, yeah. He, oh, took, okay. he took Mary away. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> sing three or four times. Oh, yeah. Well, all right. Make this special. Is he the only one we got? All right. Let's sing our brother-in-law, Mike. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday God bless you, happy birthday to you. Amen. Happy birthday, Mike. How about new people? It's your first time in our morning worship service at Bethel Baptist. If you'd raise your hand, we want to give you just a testament, a pen, a token of our appreciation of you being here. We Good love you. We care about you. Raise your hand up. Anybody that hasn't been here before. It's so good to see you. Pat and Ken here. Great friends uh, from over at Moorhead. I love them so much, and I'm glad they're here today. Got one. Now, Kathy, do the honor there. Yeah. Harold, so good to have you. Anyone else? All right, so glad all of you are here. It's a special day, and Dave will lead us in the worship of the Lord Jesus. It's all about him. For 103 years, it's all about Jesus. Well, now, Tim, he always uses this uh, PowerPoint. I've never tried it, but I thought, well, maybe today do some old hymns. That uh, homecoming is all about. How, how long have we been on the radio? In the 50s, right? Is that when you started, Dad? This was a theme song. So I thought, well, let's start with Power in the Blood. Let's see if we can do that. Let's stand as we sing. Let's sing. Oh, hey, it works. Let's sing. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Sing it. There's power. Blood of 
Father, we thank you so much for your love toward us. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, for sending our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus. He is worthy of all of our praise and our love and our faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for our church. Thank you for your faithfulness to us all these years. And thank you for the work for Christ that's been done. I pray, Father, that today would be a day of celebration. It would also be a day of rededication. There's much work to be done. Help us, Father, to work until you call us home. And, Father, thank you for every person here. You know the needs of everyone. Please meet those needs in a way that brings you glory and that strengthens our faith. I pray, Father, you'd anoint the singing. We're so thankful for the Mike Bowling family and the preaching, of Brother Tom Lester, and our fellowship together. Let the service please you. And, Father, I pray that in everything we do, 
Jesus is lifted up. I ask you to bless every person. Please encourage us, challenge us, convict us, do what you'd have, what your will is for us, and help us always to be in your will. Help us to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, whatever number of years we've had our camp meeting, which I believe is 35 years, this is our 35th year, I believe, we've known him a little bit longer than that. Uh, our very first Menifee County camp meeting was up on the old school grounds under a tent that Brother Tom brought. The first two or three years, uh, we used that tent. And he'd come up there with his big sledgehammer and those, and those uh, uh, whatever, spikes, uh, whatever they were. But he pounded those in there, and we'd set up that tent uh, for our camp meeting. But uh, Brother Tom has been a friend of our family for a long, long time. We love him. We appreciate him. He's a good man of God, preaches the word, stands for the Lord Jesus, has a, has a real heart for evangelism and for obedience to the Lord. Would you please welcome Brother Tom Lester to bring our message. Thank you, preacher. Love you, man. Thank you. Well, let me say it's my privilege to be here. Uh, Mike, I enjoyed that singing. I really do. John, I would never met Mike personally. John introduced me to him at the, the front door and I walked down the hall to the, the table and I was sitting there talking to somebody and David walked up and he said, uh, let me introduce you to the singer. I said, oh, I know him. Mike said, oh, yeah, we're good friends. And I thought, man, you stretch it as far as I do. <laughs> uh, but, uh, boy, that was good. That was really good. Let me say thank you to Brother Tim and Bethel Baptist Church. This place is real special to me. I preached in that little old block building over there on the other side of the auditorium. And I've always appreciated the free spirit in this place. I've always appreciated your love and your, your, your passion for this area and everything. And I, too, am not going to talk a whole lot that's not Bible because I don't want to tax your time. But I want to give you something. I believe God laid it on my heart. I want you to turn, if you would, to Acts chapter number 27. We're going to read a few verses in the last part of 27 and a few verses out of chapter 28. But in Acts chapter number 27, verse number 41, the Bible said, In falling into a place where the two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. You say, preacher, were they really that mean? Were they, were they that vicious? Well, they were, but what you need to understand is if you were standing guard on a prisoner in that day and that prisoner escaped, you served his sentence, okay? So there was a whole lot more to it than just meanness, although there was some meanness there, okay? Verse number 43, but the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept him from their purpose and commanded that they which uh, could swim would cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. Or chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was Miletia. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul gathered a bundle of sticks... He laid them on the fire. There came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. 
And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they'd looked for a little while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Correctly read, that's Acts 27, 41 through 28, 5. God being my helper this morning, I won't preach for a little while, and I'm going to try to be honest, okay, and make it a little while, okay. Uh, but I want to preach on slinging snakes into the fire. Let's pray. Holy Ghost of God, man, you, you've been so real and so rich in this place. God, I don't want to mess it up. God, I just pray I could get slapped out of the way and the Holy Ghost of God would so anoint me. Lord, cover me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. God, I pray I'd not say one word that you wouldn't say if you weren't here this morning. I pray, God, first of all, for the folks that are sitting under the sound of my voice this morning and they do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I pray, God, Holy Ghost, that you begin to convict them right now that they're headed for a devil's hell and they'll spend eternity in a place of torment and damnation and, and all of that. God, I just pray that you'll deal with them. And then, Lord, folks that are backslid, they know they're saved, no doubt about it, uh, but Lord, they're at a guilty distance. They're not where they need to be with you this morning. And I pray, God, that you'll deal with them. Lord, I don't ask you to smack them around. God, I pray that you'd wrap your ever-loving arms around them, draw them back to the foot of the cross. And then, dear Lord, the folks that are doing their dead level best to serve you. Lord, I pray that you'd prop them up on the leaning side. I pray that you'd help them. Help, Lord, we need help this morning. And I pray, God, that your Holy Ghost would move through this place. Lord, we'll be so careful. We'll give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for make our prayer in Jesus' name. I know he's worthy. Amen. Amen. If you will allow me a little liberty this morning, I'd like to illustrate part of this sermon before I get to, get to preaching and everything. And uh, Mike said it'd be all right if I built a fire right here on these microphone cords. He said it wouldn't bother him. No, he didn't say that. I'm making all... But the, the, the island people, they built a fire, amen? And they, they, they brought wood in from the island. And, and if you'll remember, the Bible said that it was, it was raining and it was cold. They not only brought the wood in, the, the Bible indicates that they built a pretty good old fire, amen? And they got that thing ablaze and, and as folks were swimming in, some of them swam in and, and, and then there were some folks that uh, not only swim in, they, they floated in on a board, and by the way, that's the only board in the Word of God, okay, but uh, I'm not going there this morning, but they built a fire for them, amen, and, 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 and as they came in, they gather around that fire, and I'm not going to lie to it, don't worry, Tim, <laughs> but, but they gather around that, you know how it is to back up to a fire in the wintertime? Man, I love that old wood-burning stove we use. I'll tell you what, you can get up in the, in the early part of the morning and the fire's almost gone and go down there and, and, and rustle those coals around and get that thing ablaze and just back up to her, amen. And then you turn around and, and, and well, that's what they were doing, amen. And they were on a journey. They were headed to Rome, okay. They, they were going there because they were going uh, to, to t take Paul uh, to... Uh, I guess get judgment passed on him is the best way I know how to uh, approach it. But the Bible said on down in verse number uh, two, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain, because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Now I have no idea how long that fire had been burning. I have no idea how big of a fire it was, although I think it was a pretty good sized fire because there was a bunch of people, a shipload full of people. They all got there and everything. But Paul got the idea. Paul decided, hey, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get me a bundle of sticks. And, and, and it didn't say logs, it said sticks, amen. So Paul went out in the woods and he got himself a bundle of sticks and he was gonna help out, amen. And he took them sticks over there and he threw them on the fire and when he did, there was a snake in there and the snake fastened itself to his hand and everything and the people, they must have been Baptist. They said, yeah, yeah. He got off the ship but he's guilty. 
Amen. You know how bad these people are. They kill their wounded, okay? But, but old Paul was a wrestling with that snake and everything, and it was fixed on to his hand. I believe it was a venomous snake. The Bible said it was. I believe it had big old fangs that was stuck into his, 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 his hand and everything. And finally, Paul got over to that fire, and he slung that snake into the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of us in this auditorium this morning. We got some snakes we need to sling into the fire. Amen. I mean, God the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. I'm not going to catalog sin, but you know what God's talking to you about. I want to talk to you about four or five snakes. I'll give you two or three more things, then we'll go eat. Amen. But the first snake that we need to deal with, and by the way, let me, I, I like something I read from F.B. Meyer. F.B. Meyer said, accidents are not punishment. You know, there's a crowd that believes that every time something happens to a Christian, God's punishing him, amen? Now I got news for you, when you get a flat tire, it may not be God punishing you, okay? I mean, when some bonehead runs a red light and T-bones you, okay, God may not be punishing you, okay? And I want to add something to that, if I can, since it's not scripture. And I didn't ask Brother Meyer. I will when I get to heaven. But uh, not only are accidents not punishments, temptations are not punishments. We're all tempted, okay? Each and every one of us, okay? No, also, attacks are not. I tell you what, you serve God long enough, and you're going to get attacked. I, 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 I tell you, I, I've kind of... I've kind of really got hooked on this song. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. The Rochesters, man alive, I like that song, okay? But, but, but let me tell you something. Every time something happens in your life, it's not that, that God's chastising you. So accidents, temptations, attacks, and our very sin nature, okay, are not punishment. Our first snake we need to deal with is a big problem. It's a big problem in my life. It's a big problem in your life. And that's the snake of self. Okay? I'll tell you what, the guy I have more problem with in this entire world is the face I shave, well, partially anyway, okay? Every morning. It's the guy that, that I brush his teeth for every morning. It's the guy that I gotta walk with and talk with every day of my life. And ladies and gentlemen, the biggest snake that I need to throw into the fire every day, several times a day, is that old snake called self, okay? I mean, we, we, we get that old snake hanging on our arm and he's a flopping around and everything and, and we get self-righteous and, and all of that. We need to take that snake and sling him into the fire. Amen. Slinging snakes into the fire. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not only the, the snake of self, okay? It's the snake that comes into our life many, many times, okay? The snake of Satan. Let me tell you something. Satan hates you. No holds barred. He don't want to slow you down. He don't want to just hinder you. The Bible says Satan's like a roaring lion, walking to and fro, seeking whom he may just inconvenience. That's all it says. The Bible says devour. Okay? And ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of folks that's got the snake of Satan in their life and they're, they're petting that snake. And that snake is, is, is about halfway acting like he's calm and docile like that one. Now, I don't know whether Paul carried that snake in or the fellow before him carried the snake in. I have no idea who carried the snake in. But let me tell you something. That's the way Satan comes into our life, okay? And, and he'll destroy you if you'll let him. You say, preacher, I'm saved. Yeah, me too, all right? But he can ruin your testimony, okay? He, he can destroy your family. He can do things that you can't even dream of. Ladies and gentlemen, that old snake of Satan attacks our life. We need to sling that snake into the fire, okay? The snake of self. The snake of of Satan, and then the snake of society. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed or not, but the society we live in is a pretty wicked place. Amen. Amen. 
And, and, and let, me, let me just say this, and I'll go on. This ain't a political thing. But I'm stinking sick and tired of all this political arguing and, and everything. I think America is, uh, is in worse shape now than it was when it was in the Civil War. I really do. And, and I, I'm sick and tired, not just the politics. I'm tired of society and what society uh, promotes is okay. Let me tell you something. It's not an alternate lifestyle. It's sin in the house of Almighty God. Drunkenness is still drunkenness. Profanity is still profanity, okay? Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of people in the old snake of society has gotten a hold of them, okay? I thank God for some politicians I know that are willing to take a stand for Jesus, okay? Serving Jesus really pays, okay? He, he, they may not get a raise in their salary, but let me tell you something, the benefits are out of this world, okay? And there's a lot of people need to take the snake of society. And, and that also is the snake of, of you climbing the corporate ladder. I'm all for you doing as good as you can do, okay? But when that gets in place of your service for the Lord, it's sin, okay? And we need to take that old snake that, 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 that's latched on their hand of society, and we need to take that snake, we need to throw him. In the, we need to sling some snakes into the fire, folks. The snake of self, the snake of Satan, the snake of the sphere of our living. You know, there's things in my life that in themselves are not sin, okay? Um, when I found out I had diabetes, man, I, I mean, I love to eat. I mean, you can tell it. <laughs> but, uh, I, I mean, I love to eat. And I love Snickers candy bars. My wife will tell you, every day, every day, I had anywhere from three to six Snickers candy bars when I went to bed. That's probably why I have diabetes right now, okay? If you just want to know the truth. But man, I love Snickers candy bars, okay? I mean, I, 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 I love that old caramel pie like you get at, uh, uh, not Uncle Charlie's, but old Charlie's, okay? And it's about that thick. And it's so good, it'll make your tongue slap your brains out of you. I like that stuff, okay? When I found out I had diabetes, the doctor kept saying, that, now, you can't eat this. And you can't have this. And you can't have this. And you, I said, Doc, what am I going to eat? He said, vegetables. I said, I don't like them. <laughs> but ladies, you know, let me tell you something. You can ask my wife. I was one bear to live with for about a year. I was mad at the world. I was mad at, at dietary regulations. I was mad at diabetes and, and, and everything. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing wrong with a caramel pie. But when you're a diabetic, okay, not a good idea to be eating it, okay? I don't know what you're dealing with, but we're all dealing with something. Brother, I'm so glad God has blessed you and your family in, in, in their health. They've dealt with things we haven't dealt with, okay? All right, some of you have lost loved ones. First time I've been back since your mom died. I was there that night, okay? And I miss her. I don't miss her like this family misses her, okay? And they'll miss her for the rest of their life. Got a phone call or a text, I think it was yesterday morning. Dear friend of mine for over 40 years went to heaven. I told my wife the, the night before or two nights before, I, don't, I, I, I can't believe he's still alive, okay? And, and his family's good. We, we all wrestle with things in our life, okay? And it may not be sweets and it may not be the loss of a loved one, but we all wrestle with things. And that old snake, that old snake of the fear we live in is attached to our hand, okay? And we need to sling that snake into the fire, yeah. amen? I'm not saying forget about them, okay? I'm just saying keep your priorities where they need to be. We need to sling the snake of self into the fire. We need to sling the... Uh, the snake of the sapphire we're living in into the fire. We need to sling the snake of Satan into the fire. We need to sling the snake of sin into our fire. If you've got any questions, just read the instruction manual. Amen? I mean, if it says it's sin, it's sin. And Brother Mike, I don't always like it when the Bible calls it sin. Amen. I, I mean, there's, there's just 
there's things that the Bible tells me to do that I, I, I wrestle with God. I don't know if I've ever told the story or not. When I, right after I got saved, Luke loved to chew beets, not chewing tobacco. Oh, son, I love to chew that better than I love to eat supper. And I wrestle with that, and I wrestle with that, and, and finally, God Almighty got a hold of me and gave me the victory over that. We all wrestle with some type of sin. Okay? And those are some snakes we need to sling into the fire this morning. Amen? Amen? Not only are there snakes we all have to deal with, but second of all, there are snakes that may be brought in by ourselves. I know a lot of people that, that, that walk around with the lower lip hung down complaining on how God uh, is allowing somebody to punish them and they're the ones that brought it on themselves, okay? Let me tell you something. You drink enough rot gut liquor, you're going to have cirrhosis of the liver, okay? That is a proven medical fact. It will pickle your liver, okay? Okay? You, you, you have an, a, an ungodly relationship uh, with somebody of the same sex, and sooner or later, they, they got a dumb commercial on TV right now about this, okay? Uh, saying, well, we just need to be careful. No, you don't need to be careful. You need to quit that ungodly action, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes them old snakes in our life is snakes we've brought on ourselves, okay? Okay, you just ask Rick. I don't know where he's at. He's here. He probably, he probably already, oh, there you are. Okay, <laughs> I was going to pick on you, but he's back there. Okay, but you just ask old Rick. You, you drive long enough on the interstate at 85 miles an hour, you will get a ticket. Is that right, Rick? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's right. And he ain't even out there no more. When we're on the interstate, I may have told this, I can't remember what I tell when I go, so I gotta tell the truth all the time so I won't mess up. When I drive on the interstate, I drive 67 and a half miles an hour. Aggravates the immortal tar out of my wife, okay? I mean, let me tell you something, honey, she drives with a hammer down everywhere would you go. But every now and then, we'll, we'll top a road going down an interstate, and there, there'll be a, a smoky bear sitting over there in the media. She hits that brake, you know, and, and tries to keep it straight. And, and, and I say, now, darling, if you wasn't speeding, you wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> a lot of times, these old snakes are brought on by ourselves. Okay? It's not something somebody else did. It, it's not some some punishment that God's dealt out to you is something you need. And we need to take that snake and we need to sling him into the fire. Now, I will say this. Sometimes we de deal with snakes that are brought on by somebody else. Okay? It's not always our fault. All right? And no matter how that snake got there, no matter what happened, it, it, if it's one of these or some other sin that maybe God spoke to your heart about, okay? You need to sling that snake into the fire, okay? And you know what? That old snake uh, that, 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 that we brought in our life, he may have been brought in while we were serving God. Hello? Hey, ain't time to pray. Look up here, okay? Just because you're serving God doesn't mean you can't sin. I could name some names of men that I used to look up to that pastored great churches in America that have fallen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, my heart breaks for them. Yeah. It really does. Okay? But ladies and gentlemen, just because you're saved and just because you've got the Holy Ghost living inside of you, does not mean that you live in a sinless capsule of your life, okay? There is no such thing as sin eradication. I don't care what some groups say. You can't show it to me in the Word of God. In fact, in 1 John, the Bible said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and forgive us for all our... Isn't that what it says, preacher? Amen. That's right. I'm glad I remembered it correctly, okay? I have to deal with sin every life, and I'm doing 
on a dead level this to serve God. I probably don't travel as much as these folks do, but I'm on the road about 40 weeks a year. Okay, I mean, I'm trying. For an old man, it ain't bad, okay? I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I just, uh, I try to, keep, try to keep serving. Let me tell you something. Even though it's been a long journey, oh, oh I've been blessed. Okay, walking with Jesus, I have no regrets, okay? He's been good to me. He's been awful good to me. He's been far better to me than what I deserve. I ought to be dead and in hell this morning. And the ones of you that know my testimony, you know Preacher Moore, he tells it everywhere he goes. I don't tell as much as he does, but he tells it everywhere he goes. I was a hellbound hippie on the streets of Atlanta, Georgia. I was living for the devil. I had no, I had no fault of serving God. I was grabbing for all the gusto I could get. But then Jesus passed by. Oh, Jesus passed by. And oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Honey, I can't explain it, and I cannot tell you why. But oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Let me tell you something. When I got saved, I didn't know anything about theology. But I knew something had happened to me. John, I was different than I used to be. The places I used to go, I didn't want to go there anymore. The things I used to do, I didn't want to do them anymore. A lot of the words I used to say, I didn't want to say them anymore. And I didn't understand what that was until I got over in the Word of God in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He brought me in from the field of sin with his arms of mercy. Christ brought me in. Just look out yonder where I'd have been. Oh, praise the Lord. He brought me in. Is that enough to audition for you, Mike? Have you seen enough? Okay. You know, I do that, and then I think, my soul alive, there's people here that can sing. <laughs> but, you know, I've got them in, but let me tell you something, folks. Those snakes may or, not, may or may not have been brought in by ourselves. We may have been serving God in while we're doing, we may be doing more than somebody else. Sometimes we get snakes that we bring in by mistake. Amen. I don't know about you, but if, if you've served God very long and tried to help people, you're going to help some every now and then. It'll stab you in the back. Hey, I, folks, I'm not trying to discourage you. I believe we ought to be like Boaz and just throw, throw a few handfuls of purpose every now and then. Those are not handfuls on purpose. Those are handfuls of purpose. There was, there was a reason he told the gleaners to leave that behind. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to throw a few handfuls of purpose every now and then in our life. And when God, the Holy Ghost, speaks to you about doing something, you need to do it. Amen. Say, well, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'm going to get to mumbling around and everything. You just leave that up to God. Amen. The snakes are something we all have to deal with. The snakes may be brought in by ourselves. The snakes may or may not be shaken off. Now, Paul was able to take that old snake that had fixed onto his hand and sling it off. But I know people that have had to serve God with physical impairments for years and years and years and years and years in their life. They just they couldn't sling it off. Hey, there's a fellow in the Bible by the name of Paul. And if I recollect correctly, the Bible said that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Now, Pop, I don't know what that was. Maybe in his eyesight. Okay, it, it, it may have been his physical size, 
Uh, it may have been, but Paul had something that continued to attack him over and over and over again. Okay? And he couldn't shake it off. That's when his grace is sufficient. Amen. I battle this, this body of flesh just exactly the same way you do every day of my life. Amen. I don't like people cutting me off in traffic. I don't care if I'm going 67 and a half miles an hour, okay? Don't, don't pull over in front of me and slam your brakes. Coming through Hazard, Kentucky last Friday. And, and I thought I was doing pretty good. And this fella in this great big four-wheel drive monster truck pulls up behind him, starts bouncing and everything. I thought he was going to bounce on top of that little Jeep, you know? And, 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 and so I just slowed down a little bit more. I, I know, I know, I know. Everybody's got to have something to pray about. That's what I pray about, okay? Now, I caused that problem. I really did, Okay? But I, I just got a problem shaking that off, okay? I'll tell you what I used to do. Now, Mike, don't do this. This, this bad stuff here, okay? Don't, don't any of you children do this at home. Do not try this yourself, okay? But out on the interstate, you used to have people cut you off, you know? And, and, and I didn't like that. And, and they'd cut me off, and they'd pull over in front of me. <laughs> I'd speed back around them, and I'd get in front of them, and I'd, I'd lock her down. Now, I don't suggest that. that. You're not supposed to do that, are you, Rick? No, 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 no. That's, uh, that, that's bad driving. I forget what they call it, but that's bad, okay? There's things in our life that either may or may not be shaken off, but we need to keep working on it. You need to keep slinging that snake toward the fire, and you never can tell. One of these days, you're liable to get that snake shook off. I, I, I've still got problems. You've still got problems. But they're getting a whole lot better. Amen? And I realize age takes care of some things, okay? But, ladies and gentlemen, the snakes may or, not be, may or may not be shaken off. And the snakes may be fatal if you don't shake them off. Have no idea what kind of a snake that was. The, viper, the Bible calls it a viper. It calls it a venomous beast. And it calls it a beast. It could have been a cobra. I don't know. Could have been a water moccasin. I don't know what kind of snakes they had. By the way, on that island today, they don't have snakes. It's so cultivated and uh, it's so populated and everything. They tell me they don't have snakes over there. So we don't know, okay? But snakes may or may not be fatal if sh shaken off. Do you know why the Bible said in verse number 6, how be it they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down suddenly, but after that they looked on him for a great while and saw no harm come upon him. They changed their mind. They was waiting for that poison from that snake to get into his body and begin to coagulate his blood to the place to where it killed him. Now, obviously, they'd seen that happen. Obviously, they knew that was what was supposed to happen. Okay? Let me tell you something. You play with fire long enough, you'll get burned. Amen? Amen. You do -si do with sin long enough. And I've got a whole sermon I preach on sin always kills. Amen. Not part of the time. Not most of the time, sin always kills. So if you've got scripture for that, you all know it. The wages of sin is death. Okay? Sin always kills. And you slinging that snake off, okay, may just save your life. It may just cut it off soon enough that there wasn't enough poison got pumped through the fangs of that venomous beast into your body. And you survived. Wounded? Yeah. Survive? Very possible. But ladies and gentlemen, snakes may or not, may or not be fatal if they're not shook off. And snakes run from fire. 
They don't like it. That's why you need red hot preaching in your church. Amen. You say, we ain't got no snakes in here. Let me tell you something. The chief snake himself may be trying to start something. Amen. Amen. I, I grew up in old camp meeting preaching. I, I, I grew up when they preached hell hot and heaven sweet. And they called sin, sin, and black, black, and white, white. I, I, I remember when old Bob Jones Sr. would get up and say, do right, do right, do right, until the stars fall. Do right. Amen. Why? Because sin will flee from the fire. Many, many times in the word of God, fire has something to do with the presence of the Lord. You can fool me about a lot of things. But I've been around enough singing groups in my life to know when they got the touch of God on them and they don't have the touch of God on them. Amen. And I've been in some of them services they wanted to entertain. And I tell you what makes me want to vomit. Say, that is not politically correct. I really don't care. Amen. I, I, I mean, you know, don't get up and try to entertain. This is not an entertainment service, okay? You want to be entertained, you go down to the putt putt golf course, okay? But not the house of God. Amen. That's some of the best Southern gospel singing you'll ever hear in your life, okay? I mean, they did a great job. They didn't entertain me. They blessed my soul. They let me worship the Lord, okay? You say, preacher, you're just a little too loud and you're a little too animated and everything. Honey, you wait till we get to heaven, okay? I'm gonna run down the street to go, okay? I'm gonna be on glory boulevard. We'll know how to praise the Lord then, amen. But ladies and gentlemen, snakes flee from the fire. And that's why you need the touch and the move of the Holy Ghost of God. Not only in your church, you need it in your church. I thank God for this, your pastor now. And I thank God for your previous pastor. They had the touch of the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Amen. That'll keep a lot of snakes out of the church, okay? Because snakes like to flee from the fire. Biggest snake I want to talk about is the snake of not being saved. Now you've been sitting out there all morning long thinking you got off scot-free. Let me tell you something. What Mike said a while ago about trusting Jesus Christ, I believe his wife did too, as her personal Savior. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Amen. I've made a lot of decisions. We've, we've bought a house. We've bought vehicles. We've raised nine youngins or tried to do our best at it anyway. We've tried to do a lot of things. Let me tell you something. The best decision I ever made was trusting Jesus as my Savior. Oh, he reached way down for me. Amen. When I got saved, I was lowering a snake's belly in a wagon, right? And God saved me. And you're the only one that knows that you're saved or not. Buddy, I think my wife's saved. I really do. I mean, I've lived that woman for a long time now. And I think she's saved. I don't know if she's saved the way I know I'm saved. Let me tell you something down deep inside my soul. The Lord put something there that the world can't touch and the world can't take away. And I know that 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 I know David, I know that I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I told the Lord when I got saved, I said, Lord, if I go to hell, it's your fault. He said, You are crazy. I probably am. But that's how much I depended on Jesus the night I got saved. I'd been a Pharisee for a year and a half. Preacher Moore prayed a great prayer. I mean, greatest sinner prayer you'd ever want to hear. And I listened to it, and he said, Amen. And he said, Toad, are you saved? And I said, Yes, sir. I want that convicted, gone. I want that heart cleaned up. But it didn't happen because I didn't ask him. 
Bible said in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't ask him, you're not saved. I don't care if your last name's Rhodes. I, I don't. And, and Buddy will agree with me. Tim will agree with me. Okay? It don't make no difference what your family heritage is. It doesn't make any difference what you've given to the church or how upstanding of a member of society you happen to think you are. Amen? You haven't trusted Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins and come into your heart. You're going to split hell wide open. Say, preacher, that ain't nice. That ain't pretty and sweet. I'll get to the nice, pretty sweet part in just a minute, okay? But the Bible said that if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, or your Savior and Lord, really. He can't be your Lord until he's your Savior. But if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. They're going to throw you into everlasting fire. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so glad that I've got that gift. Forty-two years ago, August the 1st, I celebrated my spiritual birthday. Never had this happen before in my life. I was preaching revival down in Mebane, North Carolina. August the 1st was the last night of revival. And after the service, we'd had a good meeting and everything. And the preacher said, okay, hold it. It's Brother Lester's birthday. And I thought, no, my birthday's in June. He said he got saved. 40, and then, then, then it hit me, you know. I mean, I, I'm kind of dense, okay. I mean, you know, I, I don't pick up on stuff sometimes. And they sang happy birthday to me on my spiritual birthday. I sure am glad 42 years ago I bowed my knees and trusted Jesus as my Savior and asked him to take my sins away. Asked him to take me to heaven when I die. And I trusted him fully and completely. Not anything that I'd done. And if you're sitting out there and the snake of salvation not being in your life you need to throw that snake into the fire this morning. You can do it. You can ask the Lord to forgive you, come into your heart, save you, trust him. He'll do it every time. Every time. Slinging snakes into the fire. Folks, there's a lot of snakes we need to sling into the fire. If we're going to turn this country around. We're going to have to sling some snakes into the fire. If we're going to keep our families together, we're going to have to sling some snakes into the fire. If, if we're going to live our life for Jesus Christ and count for him, we're going to sling some snakes into the fire. And Paul slung that snake into the fire. And that day was a perfect example of what we need to do. I don't know what the invitation's going to be this morning, but whoever's doing it, if you go ahead and come to the platform, we're going to have a verse and a course of invitation and whatever God spoke to you about this morning, that's what you get for playing balls in church, David. I can pick on these guys. Man, I love these guys. I grew up with these guys. <laughs> I appreciate them so much. But if God spoke to your heart, would you just take a few minutes before we go eat and come down here and do business with God? There's enough people in the church house this morning. We can have somebody deal with you from the Word of God about your problem and show you how to take care of that snake. Amen. I'd like for you to bow your heads and close your eyes. They're going to start singing in just a minute. And if God spoke to you, would you slip out? Would you just come down and ask God the Holy Ghost to help you with that snake that's in your life? Let's all stand. It's about and eyes closed, please. Nobody looking around. God spoke to you. David's not going to announce the number. He's just going to begin to sing. And as he does, if God.